Hello guys, it's Vivs here from Design Coder. In this video, I'm going to fine tune the layout that I made in the previous video. So first thing I'm going to cover is how to style our toggle button the way you saw in the design preview. We have two images. This image is displayed when the button is on. This one is displayed when the button is off. So we need to make an XML file that lets us do this work called a selector. First of all, we tell the XML file that we want this image toggle underscore on from the drawable folder as our background when the button is checked or Android state checked is true as one of the items for our selector out here. The second thing we want is the toggle off from the drawable folder as the background of our toggle button when the button selected is false in other words the button is off as another item inside our selector and now here is our selector which is going to pick up one of these images depending on whether the button is on or off now this complete file make sure you add it inside an xml file called toggle underscore selector all you need to do now is go to the design part here and add our background as this toggle underscore selector file as you notice so there's Android background property that specifies that this time we want the drawable folder content file called toggle underscore selector which is going to take care of putting the right image depending on whether the button is selected or not. So now that you've seen this let's go to XML in Android Studio and do this. Coming back to Android Studio I'm going to change the view we have on the left hand side. I'll go from the project to the Android view which eliminates a lot of unnecessary files from my eyes. So going to the drawable folder here, I'm going to right click and say new drawable resource file. I will call this toggle underscore selector. It's going to be inside the general drawable folder since this applies to all devices. I'm just going to click OK here. And at this point, Android Studio is going to create a dummy file with some XML stuff written and the selector here. Now, all I need to do is put the code which I showed you guys earlier. So there's my complete selector file where I've said when the state is not checked, keep the image as drawable underscore toggle off. When the state is checked, make sure that the drawable is toggle underscore on. All I need to do is go to the activity underscore main dot XML, go down here to the text part and here I need to set the background on our toggle button. So I can do that by simply adding this property called background. That's Android background over there. I'll say at the rate drawable because the selector file is inside the drawable folder. So I'll say at the rate drawable slash and as you see there's toggle underscore selector. Once I press return or enter out there, you can go to the design tab and check for yourself. Take a look at that. Bam! There's our selector image that has been applied to our toggle button. In fact, if you run this on the device, you're going to see the same thing here. There's the on button. You click on that, the off button. And that's a nice 3D toggle button made by Gary. But you notice that this text off and on keeps coming in between, right? And we can eliminate that with the help of some property that we need to change here. If you go to the text tab, by default, the toggle button always displays some text as to whether the button is on or off. You can disable that, however, by simply using this property called text off and setting that to empty. Same way you say text on, again, you keep it empty, which means no text is displayed when the toggle button is on or off. Now when you see here in the design preview, you will notice that the text disappears and you click on on, it stays on, you click on off, it stays off, right? Let's try to run the app on the device and find out whether it matches the behavior. So there you go, this time it's on, off and there is no text displayed on that. The next thing that we need to fix is to make sure that the text view has the right color and it is at the center of the screen just like our design preview over here. For starters, let's try to center the text view. We can do that in the design tab, but sometimes the design preview is not that smart and we need to get things done in code. For example, you can go to the text tab here and we can find that text view which would be this one over here where we have 00 written out there. We need to make sure that this is at the center of the entire screen. To do that, we are just going to remove this last attribute which is center horizontal equals to true and we are going to replace that with something called center in parent. The way I do that is to say center in parent is true out here. Despite stating that the text view should be at the center of our parent that would be this complete gray area on the screen. It is still not at the center and that is because of the margin that is being applied from the top on this image view. If you go to the text part of the tab you will notice that in the image view area 
we have this attribute saying layout margin top is 139 dp which is applying extra space let's remove this attribute and at the same time we need to make a few more changes let's go back to the design tab it is still not centered however things have gone way up this time and what we need to do basically is we need to make sure that the text view has no relation with either the image view or this toggle button out here currently that's not the case if you go to the text tab you will notice that there is this statement here that says the text view should be below the image view we don't want this statement out there we will remove the statement and then we will see what happens once we do that we can go back to the design tab and this time you notice that the text view is right at the center of the screen now let's try to do the next thing that would be to change the text color of what we see here again you can do that both ways we can take a look at this area where there is text color and I'm going to select that and go to the color part. The color is actually 6161 over there. So I'm going to simply type that. Once I do so, my design previews text color matches pretty closely with my actual text color over here. Now, the next thing that we need to do is basically arrange this toggle button and the image view so that they are perfectly spaced as per the design preview that we have here. So right now in our design preview, some margin values have been applied by default while we were building this in the last video. The margin simply means stay away from me by that distance. For example, if you select the toggle button here and you go to the text part here, you notice that it has this margin top is 55 dp. So it simply says that anybody out there stay 55 dp away from me when it comes to the top side. So we are going to remove this margin and we are going to add our own attributes here. Once you remove the margin, you notice that in the design tab, the toggle button comes right below the text view. If you take a look at this, the reason for that is pretty simple. It's because of this attribute here, which says layout below ID slash text view. It simply means the toggle button should be placed right below the text view identified here. At the same time, you want to add an above constraint as well. We want to say that the image view should be right above the text view. To do that, we use the constraint called above here. And I'm going to say the same thing by saying text view over here. So the ID that we have called text view identifies this text view over here. When we say something is above that ID, we are simply saying that it is placed above that control or widget on the screen. If you go back and if you take a look at the design part now, we will see that the image view, there's the toggle, there's our text view and there's our toggle button. All we need to do now is add a bottom margin to our text view or a top margin to a toggle button either way it's gonna look the same on the screen coming back to the toggle button i have added a margin top of 64 dp to separate the text view and the toggle button in other words the text view is going to still remain at the center of the screen but since we have added a margin top the toggle button is going to be like okay stay away from me by 64 dp so if you take a look at this in the design tab this is what it looks like and if you run it on the real device this is what you see if you take a look at our preview screen here, it looks a bit different from what we have on the actual device. And the difference is due to the font being used. The preview screen uses the Source Sans Pro TTF, whereas our default font is something else. We need to change that by putting a custom font in our app. And this cannot be done through XML. We need to do this in code. For starters, we need to download that font file. Simply go to Google and type Source Sans Pro TTF Lite. Once you do that, you get this link here, which is from 1001fonts.com. You can either use an OTF file or a TTF file. And you will notice the download link for the Source Sans Pro Lite is right here. Just click the TTF part and the download starts. To make our app use that font, we need to put that first in a special folder called Assets. We can go to the right left side over here on our screen and we can go to the app part. We can say new and select the option called folder. From that, select the Assets folder. Once you do that, here you get this option saying create a source route which will be linked to blah blah blah. Just hit finish over here and you're done. So going back to the same place, you see the directory now over here called assets. Within this, we need a new directory called fonts where we are going to put our stuff. So we're going to call this as the directory and we will call it fonts here and click OK. Once you do that, inside assets you have fonts and now we need to paste our downloaded TTF file which would be right here. Once I copy that, you get this option saying copy file blah blah blah, I'll click OK over there and there's my file which is source on dash sans dash pro. Now I need to make sure that I rename it to a nice way so that it doesn't have all these hyphens and other weird characters in between. So I'm just going to right click and I'm going to say refactor and rename out there. I'm going to remove all these hyphens and replace them with underscores. 
So once I hit refactor, this is what my file looks like. Now I need to use this or link this to our text view from code. Let's see how we can do that. We first need to go to our main activity, which is inside the Java directory right here at the top. We go there to the main activity. We create a reference to our text view, which would be done by simply saying text view here. We're going to say text view and we're going to call this M timer time message or text time or whatever you want inside this method called on create which is the initial part of your activity or screen we are going to link this text view with our xml the way you do that if you remember you go to your activity underscore main dot xml to the text part of here our text view has this property called an id now we are going to use this property to link up or hook up this text view with our code so let's go back to main activity and we are going to simply use a method here called find view by id so there you go find view by id is r dot id dot text view that's what we call it and we need we need to assign this to our m text time here so I'm going to simply say m text time equals to find view by id blah blah blah. So at this point there is an error here in Android Studio. If you open that error it says cast to Android or widget or text view. The problem is it returns a view object by default. And what we have on the left hand side is a text view. So we need to change the type or type cast the object to a text view. So that takes care of that. Now I need to initialize the font. And now as you notice our font is right here on the left hand side inside the fonts folder under assets we need to link this up with our code we wrote so far first of all this is not windows where you can simply say c program files and you can get a reference to that file placed under program files right we need to use something called an assets manager we are going to call this method get assets that's going to give us control of this directory assets and this returns an object of type asset manager which i can directly write that way now the next thing i need to do is construct an object of type type face now this object represents your custom font that you guys are aware of so i'm going to simply say typeface dot create from asset as you notice it takes two things there's the asset manager and there is the string path that is needed to build that font so i'm going to just call this method create from asset pass the asset manager that we just retrieved in the above step and then i'm going to give the link to the font file which is there so this would be my complete path for the source sans pro light ttf file that we have make sure that you don't have a forward slash here because your app is going to crash otherwise now this is going to give you a reference to our typeface which can be stored inside a variable of type typeface so once you do this the only step that remains now is to set this custom font on our text view that can be done very simply by taking our text view which is m text time and calling this method set typeface on it and simply pass the custom font that we just made let's rename it even better so that you guys understand what's going on here so i'm going to select this and i'm going to press refactor rename and i'll call this custom font once i do that you can understand what's going on right we have the asset manager that represents our asset folder from there we have tried to pick up the ttf font file which is stored here inside this variable called custom font and then we have set that custom font on our text view let's try running the app and see if this works or not on running you find out that the font looks a bit smaller than what's there in the design preview now let's go back and increase the font size let's make it 144 sp which by the way i happen to find after a bit of experimentation so run this now and there you go there's our font size that matches pretty closely with what we have in the design section now you would notice one more thing that the image here in our actual app is a bit above compared to the one here in our design preview let's see how we can fix that going back to the design tab you notice that the image is actually this complete block at the top here the way we can make our image align perfectly with what we have in the design preview is to kind of overlap the image with the existing text that we have here to do that we can go to the design tab and if you take a look right now we have a margin zero at the bottom of the image view if we apply a positive margin the image view is going to shift towards the up right but if we apply a negative margin it's quite possible that the image view may come together towards the text view so let's take a look at this in action we go to the image view here and we apply a margin bottom here this time you're going to supply a value like say 24 dp which i'm just guessing right now let's run this and find out what happens so on 24 dp you can notice that 
the image view has come a bit closer towards our text view. If you take a look at this in the design tab, this is what you will notice. You have the text view here, which is this blue rectangle. And you have the image view here, which is overlapping a bit with the text view. Let's increase the margin and we can get closer to our actual design. So now I have increased the value of the margin bottom to minus 48 dp. As a result, if you go to the design tab here, you will notice that the amount of overlap between the image view and the text view has increased. And if you take a look at the real device outcome here, you will notice that the image view looks pretty close to what we have on our design tab. If the image view had lesser height and would eliminate all these redundant parts inside it, we could have had a better layout without using the hacky margin bottom hack that we just used. But this completes our design for the Android part. In the next video, we are going to take a look at how to get our hands dirty with code. The code for this video and the rest of the videos can be easily found if you just Google us out saying slide nerd GitHub. This is our official GitHub repository where we'll be adding all our stuff inside the repositories area over here. All the videos covering the design, the Android part and the iOS development are right here on designcoder.io. So be sure to sign up right today and get unlimited unrestricted access to all the videos. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.